Hello, uh, welcome to <coughs> the webinar Seek Plus FA. Um, my name is Edgar Schreiber. I am a senior product application specialist at Life Technologies Genetic Analysis Division. And today I would like to present you um, some uh, a method, a simple method for improving the limit of detection for capillary ectophoresis DNA sequencing. We call this method, uh, this application Seek Plus FA, and um, what I want to show you today is an overview of, um, of this application, uh, going, um, show, explaining you the benefits and how this method can be applied in your research. And I will show you two examples. One, the first one is the analysis of KRAS mutations, and the second example is um, uh, a, a short study on methylation analysis. And finally, I will show you some products that you need to get to uh, apply this, this method. So Seq plus FA means Sanger sequencing plus fragment analysis. It combines the power of Sanger sequencing, shown here in these traces, and fragment analysis. You can think of Sanger sequencing traces as fluorescently labeled DNA fragments. That's what they are. So the polymerase builds in fluorescently labeled dye terminators, uh, nucleotides, and that's what you see uh, as a fragment. Uh, what you see here in, is in a typical example. In sequence scanner software, you see the raw data files and then the analyzed data view. And the information that you get from the sequence analysis softwares is the base call. So you get an, uh, an assignment of the nucleotide to, to, a, uh, to its identity. It can be a G, an A, a T, a C, or in, in case you have mixed bases, you get an R or a Y. And you get quality values, shown here as the blue bars. But what you will not, what will you not get in with sequence analysis software is any information on peak height and area and the relative size. That is something you get uh, when you look at these traces in GeneMapper software. In GeneMapper software, which is uh, the fragment analysis software uh, that Life Technologies provides, you can align labeled DNA fragments by size using internal size standards. And you can label these peaks, so f and um, you can uh, label them by identity, by genotype, by peak height. You can create panels and bins for your regions of interest, and you can capture the uh, size and base pairs and peak height and RFUs and the areas, and export this data into Excel readable ta uh, tables. Um, so, in other words, you can get a really deep quantitative look into the peak landscape and that is a key to more accurate genotyping and it allows you to deconvolute complex profiles. So, <coughs> here's an overview of the, of the overall workflow. In a first step, you would set up your regular uh, sequencing reagents using Big Diterminator version 1.1 chemistry and run it on your capillary ectophoresis instrument under sequence, uh, uh, sequencing mode. And you would get sequencing data that you could read in sequence scanner software, and they would look like this. As I said, you could get your raw profile shown here and your analyzed profile shown here. And in the second step, you would add a size standard into the very same sequencing reaction and rerun it on the same instrument under fragment analysis mode. And you would analyze, the, you would collect the data as so called .fsa files and read those data in GeneMapper software. And here you would zoom into your regions of interest. And in GeneMapper, you can, as I said, already capture the peaks by clicking on them and extract the peak height and peak area information. And that allows you to do um, calculations on the amount of, of the particular nucleotides of interest. So here's an example when you explore uh, sequencing traces in GeneMapper software. It allows you to separate these traces into its individual components. So here in blue you see all the peaks for guanosine nucleotides, the G peaks. Shown here in green are the uh, A peaks for the A nucleotide. Here in black are the T traces and here in red are the C traces. And shown here is the internal size standard. In this case we use the list 600 size standard. 
a unique feature in GeneMapper is that you can align all these traces from, uh, from multiple samples. That is something you cannot do in sequence analysis software. And that is a very powerful feature in, in GeneMapper. You can align, as I said, in multiple samples and focus here, for example, on the G traces. And you can immediately see any differences, uh, if there are any, from sample to sample. Shown here is also um, a feature in GeneMapper. You can set up bins, shown here in these gray areas, as well as labels, uh, in which uh, can be configured uh, in any way you would like to have them configured. The benefits of this um, method is that you can extract more information out of your sequencing traces. You get uh, information um, on the quantity of the incorporated nucleotide, which is reflected in the peak height or area. And using GeneMapper, it allows you to deconvolute complex traces and align multiple samples with using, a size using a size standard. And the potential applications are, it allows you <coughs> to, um, you get higher sensitivity for detection of somatic mutations. And I will show you an example for that. Uh, it will probably also allow you to uh, detect heteroplasmic variations in mitochondrial genomes. It may also help you to detect emerging mutations in viruses. And uh, it may allow you to quantitate the CPG methylation status using bisulfide sequencing. And I will show you an example for that. Furthermore, it may also aid to detect SNPs in polyploid genomes. And it also aids to distinguish and size heterozygous insertions and deletions. So let's have a look um, at an example where we um, look at uh, mutations in the KRAS gene. And we have recently published a, a paper in the journal Biotechniques and in the September 2012 issue, which you can download from the Biotechniques website, where we show the improvement uh, of to detect uh, these mut mutations using this particular approach. In the, here is, um, in this slide you see exon 1 of the human KRAS gene, and of particular interest are the codons 12, shown here, GGT, and codon 13, GGC. And any change in nucleotides in the first two nucleotide positions can lead to an amino acid change, which can have uh, severe consequences. And so in this particular example, we are interested in a possible change at, at, at nucleotide 38 from a G to an A. So <coughs> in GeneMapper, we can set up uh, bins that uh, detect all these nucleotides at these various positions. So shown here is the wild type, the 34, uh, the, the guanosine at position 34, the guanine at position 35, 37, and 38. Here we have a bin for um, uh, a mutant position, the 34G2A transition. And here we have a bin for the C38G2A transition. And likewise, we can d set up bins for all of these possible mutations. And <coughs> shown here is an example where we look at mixtures of um, wild type and mutant DNA that carry the mutation uh, G2A at position 38, which leads to uh, the this particular uh, conversion of amino acids. And <coughs> when you look at the Sanger sequencing traces, which are shown here in the pane A, you can detect the presence of the 50% mutant as, as this discrete uh, little peak under, under the uh, G peak here. Uh, at a 20% presence of the G2A transition, you barely see this little hump over here in the sequencing trace when you go to 10% um, presence of that um, mutation. It's barely detectable. In 5%, it's, it's almost invisible using the sequence analysis view. Uh, 
Whereas in the gene map of view, when you look at the fragment traces, you can actually zoom into, um, when you look here at the 5% level, and you can still see the, in green here, the presence of the, of the A nucleotide. Uh, in GeneMapper, you would be able to click on that peak and collect the, uh, the peak height and peak area and compare that to um, control samples to determine its actual um, quantity. Uh, a second example is shown here for methylation analysis. Um, methylation occurs typically in, in eukaryotes at CPG motifs, shown here. So here we have a, 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 a sequence where we have a C and a G, and, and let's assume this particular C is methylated. If we treat this DNA with uh, bisulfite um, and, and subsequent uh, hydrolysis, that uh, methylated C would remain unchanged, whereas any unmethylated Cs would be converted to a uracil residues, which will then be eventually converted to a T nucleotide after in vitro replication by PCR. So sequencing the bisulfide converted DNA and knowing the original sequence, we can then infer that uh, um, that the presence of a C is an, a methylated C. In a sequencing trace, this would look like this. Uh, so the C would present as a red peak, whereas the, the G would present as a blue peak. After bisulfide conversion, we would still see a, a, a red peak here and a blue peak here. In case of an unmethylated CPG dinucleotide, we would observe a change uh, to a black T peak and uh, we would still see the, 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 the blue G peak over here. Now, <coughs> in mixed samples or in incomplete or partial methylation, we would see the presence of two peaks, uh, a red C peak here and a, and a black T peak over here. The question is now how much uh, uh, methylation has occurred at a particular locus of interest. And to that end, I did an experiment where I looked at a particular CPG uh, allele at position 139 in the ICAM gene promoter and uh, compared mixtures of genomic DNAs that were in, in mixed in different amounts. And with methylated DNA. So either 0% methylated DNA or 100% and mixtures of, of those ranging from 5, 10, 20, 40, and 60%. Those mixtures were the converted by, uh, by sulfide treatment and the PCR region of interest was, uh, uh, the, the region of interest was amplified um, by, by PCR and then uh, subject to cycle sequencing and uh, run also as a fragment analysis file on the CE genetic analyzer. The peak heights of this CPG dinucleotides of interest were then captured with GeneMapper software, exported and analyzed in Microsoft Excel software. And here is the actual raw data. So for here we see uh, the methylated DNA, 0%, 5%, 10%, 20, 40, 60, and 100%. The blue traces are shown here, the peak heights of the blue traces. The peak heights of the black traces are shown here, and the peak height of, of the red traces are shown here for these various samples. And there is some sample to sample variation, peak height variation, and to account for those, we have to normalize the actual uh, data. And to that end, I use the signal of the blue G peak as my standard reference. So I, to, to normalize the data, we divide the peak height of the black trace with the peak height of the G trace and multiply it with 100. And that is shown here in this lower pane. And then eventually these data are now normalized to 100%. So the values here for 
0% and 100% methylation are set at 100% and all the other data are uh, converted relative to these 100% numbers. And they can then be plotted here in this, uh, in this plot and you will see two lines that cross each other at 50%. So here we have the line for, uh, here we have the graph for um, the methylated cytosine and here we have the graph for the uh, unmethylated DNA. So how can you use Sigpas FA in your laboratory for you, your research? Um, you need to calibrate your instrument and set up a matrix for dice set E. And to that end, you can use the DS02 matrix standard for the uh, 3100 or 3130 or 3500. The part number is shown here. Uh, and the die set E matrix standard is typically used to run the snapshot application, but the die set is also compatible with the die set of the big diameter version 1.1 chemistry. So once you have done that, you then can use the Big Dye Terminator 1.1 cycle sequencing kit to do your sequencing reactions and use any of the uh, uh, gene scan LIS labeled size standards to run your fragment analysis runs. And for data analysis, we recommend the GeneMapper software. However, you can also use uh, the peak scanner software which is available for free for download on the live technologies website or the 3500 fragment analysis software that is comes with the data collection software however the latter two softwares are not suitable for binning and automated data capture whereas in GeneMapper you can set up defined panels and bins and uh, export your, your your data of interest into excel readable files so taken together, um, Seq plus FA means sequencing plus fragment analysis. It gives you potentially higher sensitivity for detection of somatic mutations, for detection of heteroplasmic variations in mitochondrial DNA, possibly also detect muta emerging mutations in viruses, and allows you to quantitate CPG methylation status using bisulfide sequences. And it's an aid to also detect SNPs and polyploid genomes and allows you to distinguish and size heterozygous insertions and deletions. And uh, as usual, uh, this application is only for research use only. It's not meant for use in diagnostic procedures. Thank you for your interest and attention.